Hello, Nim community. Would like to share with you a new UI framework. Let's let's see first a demo, and then discuss how it works. Started. So the framework is started, and we can see this is example of to do list. Let's play with it. So we have one item buy milk. Let's also make a reminder for ourselves to buy also some beef. So this is well known uh, demo application. It's called to do MVC and it's fully implemented with this framework. You can run it yourself. Let's do something more interesting. Let's open another instance. Another instance of this UI. And see, as you can see, the state is synchronized between different frameworks and it's done in a smart way. For example, if I edit, it's not going to be synchronized. It's only synchronized the data. If, if I change the, the actual data, for example, if I yeah, see it happens here. Okay, this is the demo. Let's uh, let's discuss how it works now. And to do that, let's see at our logs. Currently, this fra this framework is universal. You can deploy it in many different ways. You can deploy it to the as, on the server as it's done right now, or you also can compile it to JavaScript and deploy it to the browser. So it's going to be work. If you compile to JS, it's going to be working similar to how React or Svelte works. Um, okay, just to, to better understand how it works, let's let's do this. Let's click on a button and see what happens in our logs. So we finished by milk, and we can see that our name process got event telling that uh, input with this uh, ID has been changed to true. So this is the input, we clicked it and changed to true and server got event. So this input gets to true. And server calculates, server process this event and calculated the update for the browser and it tells browser to find element like this with this ID, this is this list. And set attribute class to complete it. It's uh, set class to complete it and we see this item is completed. So basically what happens, server maintains the UI state, it uh, reacts on event from the browser, uh, calculates the difference between the current and new UI, and sends browser a set of commands uh, how to change, how to evolve the current UI into new UI. Uh, so that's basically how it works. And we can see that there is actually two lines. We, uh, we click on a checkbox in only once, so this is the this event. But there are two outputs, and this is two outputs because it sends to one session. This is the idea of the session, this window, and it's also sent uh, update to another session to this window. So if we close it, let's see. After a couple of seconds, we're going to see a message that this yeah sessions closed. Okay, now let's see some. Uh, code, uh, how, how their code looks like. The main priority for the code, it is, is to, is the development productivity. So the focus to be able, uh, fast and easy, create a complicated UI. So the, to do that, the code should be short and simple. And the example for this, uh, for this, demo has around 180 lines of code and huge part of it is just a kind of HTML. So the actual code is even smaller, the actual UI code is even smaller, it's like around 100 lines. So this is the UI. This is more like deployment. Couple of more words about the deployment. Um, okay, let me let me open readme and show you something. Let, let's see this line. So the whole framework is basically just one function. It gets a list of in events and it uh, produces list of out events. And that's it. There is no more. Uh, there is no more to this framework. 
So because it does not depend on any environment, it does not need browser environment or server environment, it's only this function. And so it makes um, possible to have very flexible deployment. You can compile it to JS and deploy to browser and then this function going to be executed inside of the browser and it will work similar the same way as uh, React works or Karax works. But you also can do different things. You can uh, run this uh, function on the server and send this event from the browser over the HTTP and respond without events back to HTTP. And so you have a server-side application. You also could do it with um, uh, desktop application with the Electron Web View and other options. So as I said, this is just one function. It does not make any assumption or requirement on environment. It does not tie to browser or anything else. And so you, you can even serialize this. Uh, you can even serialize the state of this uh, component, and then deserialize it back and uh, continue your, 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 your UI. So you can just shut down the application, uh, restore it back, and the UI is going to be restored. Also, you can uh, record the input events, and you can replay, replay the, you could replay uh, the UI interactions. OK. A couple of more, couple of words are about its features. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, this is um, so basically the framework itself. It doesn't matter if you deployed it to server or to the browser. It is uh, reactive and works mostly like Svelte. I try to. I think Svelte. Uh, after the old Delphi, Svelte is the best UI framework. One of the best UI framework for today's. It's it's very productive, very simple, and very efficient. And I try to don't reinvent the wheel and just uh, copy the best things that are available for today and that's well done. So uh, I try to, it, it's going to look, the development of this framework, the development with this framework going to look similar to how Svelte works. It has uh, same way as Svelte, it has stateful components. That's, that's very important for a couple use cases. I'm not going to go into detail why I need this and why this is important. So why state why I need stateful components and not just stateless render functions? Because it's it's kind of will be too long. This discussion is going to be too long. But this thing is important. Also uh, bidirectional data binding to inputs. If you knew how to get inputs from React, it's kind of messy. So in Svelte it's much better. It, it's um, binding and the same way it works here. There are couple of edge cases, uh, there are still a couple of edge cases and it's going to be probably updated in the future, uh, but mostly it works. Uh, yeah, multiple UI instances could be synchronized, could, could share memory and could be synchronized. Again, there are a couple of edge cases you need to address and be aware of, but it's interesting that it works. Uh, fast initial page load because it is uh, um, because there is no all, all the because the all the framework is if you deploy it to the server, so the all code going to be on the server and the, in the browser there be there going to be nothing. It's going to be just uh, I don't know maybe one kilobyte of JavaScript to send events and receive events. So it's going to be loaded very fast. And also, uh, if you knew about the CO search engine, uh, it is. Um, the first page, the first page, uh, the actual HTML uh, produced. So the search, so, so unlike the React, your the sites built with this framework going to be easily uh, indexed by search engines. If you don't like it, you can change it, and it's going to be empty and only built with JavaScript. Uh, also, as I mentioned, already mentioned, flexible deployment. Like um, yeah, you could you could you could run it on the server. You could um, compile it to JavaScript and run in a browser. Okay, currently I still haven't finished uh, compiling to JavaScript because this framework relies on NRE, NIM regular expression from the standard library, and it cannot be compiled to 
it depends on some C library that cannot be compiled to JavaScript. So I need to refactor this dependency, this dependency on uh, regular expression and replace it something else, and then it's going to be compiled to JavaScript. Uh, okay. Couple of words. Yeah, let's see. I, I forget to show you the actual code. Let's see it more closely. So here's the the our model, our data for to-do list. This is uh, component uh, to-do item. So this is the to-do item, one line, and this component renders a checkbox uh, edit form, like this edit form. Checks uh, delete uh, button. This is the HTML for to do all this. Uh, okay. And you can also, when you're going to take a look at this example, just search for feature, feature, and there are a couple of comments highlighting use highlighting usage of different features. In this case, stateful, it means that editing, this editing value of editing, going to be maintained between renders. So basically, the stateful means that attributes of a component going to be maintained between uh, render. Uh, this is a component for the whole to-do. So for the whole to-do. Interesting things. So, and here we using our uh, stateful component. So, this is line. We, in a cycle, we render list of to-do items. Again, similar way how Svelte, how Svelte does it. Uh, binding, let's see if, I, if we have binding. Yeah, to future bindings. So um, this is the complete checkbox, and we bind it to item completed uh, attribute. So whenever this the value of this input, it it could be checkbox, it could be string, it could be another inputs, going to be changed. The it, the value of our data binded data going to be automatically updated. So you don't, you never need to explicitly touch HTML. You don't need to know about touch any JavaScript. So it's it's going to be updated automatically. That's pretty much, and this is the deployment. This is uh, as I mentioned. So th this part, it's the UI itself. It it doesn't. It 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 going to look exactly the same if you're going to deploy it to server or to browser. So it's it is not change. And this, you uh, decide how how you want to deploy it. If you want to deploy it to as the server, you're going to require HTTP, and then serve this. Uh, and then uh, run run this this server. Later, I'm going to add something like a similar switch and deploy it to browser, like compile to JS and deploy to browser. So that's all. You can check the code. So this is repository. And you can check, read the readme this month. Okay, bye.